What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we had a very strong finish to the week and the year 2023 is off to a very bullish start but we are approaching some very critical bear market resistance levels. So first up, let's take a look at a weekly chart of the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So we're looking at a weekly chart of SPY and we can see we did get a very bullish finish to the week. And on the weekly chart, we are starting to get a pivot from this support at SPY 380. So we did finish the week near the high of the candle and we did break above last week's candle. So we are getting this pivot from support which means we are going to have a very good chance that the bulls can try to push through the bear market resistance and put an end to the bear market. Whether you think it's possible for the bear market to be over or not is irrelevant because we're strictly following the chart. And if the chart gets a price action breakout above the bear market resistance trend line and we get another weekly higher high above SPY 407, this is going to look like a bull trend on the weekly chart and the weekly chart has very powerful trends. Remember the last thing we saw SPY do was bounce off the weekly 200 simple moving average, put in a higher low, and now if we get that bull breakout, it is going to look like a bull market is starting. However, we cannot say a bull market is starting before the price action confirms it, so we will need to see SPY breaking above the resistance trend line at 400 and then getting that next weekly higher high close above 407. It is then and only then that we can say the bear market is likely ending and we're going into a bull market. So you can continue to stay long on this market. You just need to manage your risks down here below SPY 380. Or if you want to use a higher risk level, you can use SPY 390. If you want to short this market, you can do so right here at SPY 400 because that is a very well-defined risk level. Or you can use the higher up risk level up here at SPY 407. So whether you're long on this market or short on this market, you have very well-defined risk at this point. So it's up to you to decide which side of the trade you want to be on and which side you think is likely going to have the breakout. Now, once it's objective, we will see the price action confirming the breakout, and then there will be no more debate on which direction this market is going. But there is a very good reason why the bears and the bulls could disagree on where the market is going from here, because we don't have any confirmed breakout below SPY 380 for the bears, or above SPY 400 for the bulls. So we don't have the clarity of whether or not this market is bearish or bullish. We just know we have a weekly pivot from critical support and we're currently at critical resistance. So jumping over to the daily chart of SPY, we can see that we did finish the week up near the very critical bear market resistance, which is going to be the zone between 399 and 400. And that is exactly where I have positioned the big bad bear. He is the one that is likely going to try to drive the prices lower. And I still think there's a very good chance we see SPY coming down to fill the gap just above 390. Now, if you remember back, I said there would likely be a Santa Claus rally and I did draw this arrow that would take us up to about 396 on SPY. And even though I had the arrow drawn in this position, we clearly did not get there in the time that I had it drawn, but we did eventually get to that price target. So for that reason, I am not going to continue to move this arrow where I have SPY coming down to 390 because even in the event we go higher or hold up around this level for another couple of days, I still think there is a very good chance we are going down to fill that gap once we get rejected from the big bad bear. So whether I have the arrow drawn here or I put the arrow over here is absolutely irrelevant because I don't know exactly how to time the stock market and that is a very difficult thing to do. I just think there is a very good chance we see SPY getting rejected and coming back down towards 390. Now once we get to 390 and close that gap, I think the bulls will have all of the rest they need. They will likely try to put in another higher low at that point and then at that point i think the bulls will go try to battle the big bad bear and at that point i think the bulls will have a much better chance of defeating the bear so i do think in the short term we need to see a cooldown, which is likely going to be down towards by 390 and exactly the day we get there i have absolutely no idea now if i'm wrong we're going to blast right through the bear market resistance trend line like it's not even there and the bulls are going on parade and we're going to see another short squeeze i just don't think that is the highest probability chance but just keep in mind the market couldn't care less what i think so you need to have your own trade plan and you need to know exactly what you're going to do around these very critical risk levels so for you bears if you're shorting the market you need to be managing your risk right here right around 400 and you bulls need to be managing your risk down here right around 390 or this support trend line down here right around 383. So that is how I see the market going into next week. We are going to see a very major rejection or a very major bullish breakout. And there is no way to know exactly which one is going to play out. 
but I do give the highest probability chance of a short-term rejection to close the gap to the downside. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 0.69% today. And again, the triple Qs had a very strong close to the week and they are currently the market leaders for the year 2023. And they do have a gap to fill just to the upside at 283. And we did get up to that very critical resistance on the daily chart right around 280. So just like SPY, there is a chance we can get rejected from this resistance and come back down towards this gap fill right around 273 or come all the way back down to the breakout level between 268 and 270. From there, I think there's a good chance the bulls put in a higher low and then start pushing towards the gap fill at 283 and the critical bear market resistance right around 288. Now, if the bulls go up without any cool down, we're likely going straight to the gap fill at 283. And then if we continue higher from that, we will be outside the upper Bollinger Band and starting to get overextended as we approach the critical bear market resistance at 288. So in the event we go straight to the bear, I think there's a very good chance the bear easily wins that battle. So don't be surprised if the bulls try to get a cool down to a higher low before they go battle the big bad bear. On the Dow Jones, we were up 0.3% this week and we got the second day in a row closing outside the upper Bollinger Band and we are very clearly in a bull trend with the price action above all of the moving averages and all of the moving averages stacked to the bull side. So for that reason, you can stay bullish in the Dow Jones above 335 to 334 because the next upside price targets will be 346 and then 350. Just like the other indices, there is the chance we get a little bit of a pullback before we go any higher. So look for that support between 335 to about 337. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 0.66% today and IWM has the third day in a row closing outside the upper Bollinger Band. So again, this is very bullish price action, but it is getting a little too far overextended. There's a very good chance IWM is going to find very strong resistance at 188. But if we break above 188, then we could start to run towards 195. The cool down period in IWM would likely take us down towards 185 to 184 or down towards this breakout zone between 182 and the gap fill just below 181. On the RK ETF, we're up 1.41% today and RK is looking very bullish back over this very critical resistance at 34.6 and we are closing outside the upper Bollinger Band so the bulls are definitely pushing in the short term. As long as RK can hold above 34.6, we can make a run to the next resistance at 38 and then 40.4. If we break below the support, we're likely coming back down towards the next strong support at 32.5 or the gap fill at 31.68. On the VIX, we were down 2.6% today and the VIX continues to get crushed outside the lower Bollinger Band and the VIX is now down below 20 for the second day in a row and the VIX did reach the price target of 18. So this does tell us that fear is leaving the market, which is going to allow the market to go into a sustainable bull rally. However, this is also where the VIX can start to spike and we could see volatility coming right back into the market. So you're only expecting the bull trend while the VIX is down here below 20. If we spike back above 20, then you'll be preparing for that pullback. On Bitcoin, we're currently up nearly 6% on high volume buying and Bitcoin is blasting right through that resistance at 19,000 and the resistance at the 200 daily moving average, which was at 19,500. Our next price target from here will be 20,300 and then we'll likely start running up towards 22,000 to 25,000. There is no way with a risk on asset like Bitcoin starting to go into a very impulsive bull trend that we are going to see a very strong bear market this year. So Bitcoin is flashing a lot of risk on sentiment signals right now. In Bitcoin, you can stay bullish as long as we're above the breakout at 19,000. On Amazon stock, we were up nearly 3% today with a very nice bullish bodied candle and we did close outside the upper Bollinger Band for the third day in a row and we did close above the resistance at 97. So from here, Amazon is going to be trying to get to 102 and then the gap fill at 110. Watch downside support right around 96 in the 50 EMA at 93 because if we lose support, we'll likely come down and fill the gap at 90. On Microsoft stock, we were up 0.3% today and Microsoft is back over the 20 daily moving average for the second day in a row, but we're still below the resistance at the 50 EMA at 240. Microsoft's critical resistance will be 240 and 242, and below that we could still get rejected and come back down towards this gap fill at 225. Below 225, we have support at 222 and then 214, but if we start getting the bull breakout above 242, we will be looking for a run up to 252. On Nvidia stock, we are up 2.35% today, and Nvidia did break back over the negatively sloping 200 daily moving average and back over the resistance right around 167. So the next upside resistance will be right around 170 and the gap fell at 174. You can stay bullish above 166 to 165, but if we break support, we'll likely come back down to 156. And then below 156, we do have a gap to fill at 150. 
On Tesla stock, we were down 0.94% today and Tesla is still finding very strong resistance right here, right around 123. And that is going to be the critical resistance the bulls need to break to get the short squeeze. And remember the short squeeze in Tesla should take us to 138 and then 155. Now, if we can't break above 123, there is the chance we get rejected from this resistance and come down and fill the gap down here just above 114. And if we break below the gap, we'll likely come back down to the critical support at 107. 107 is very critical weekly support and there's very high volume buying at this level. So I do think that is possible this could be the bottom. But if we break 107, we will be looking for that next leg lower at 94. On Apple stock, we were up 1.01% and Apple is back up to the critical resistance at 135, which means you can stay bullish as long as we're above 131, knowing there is the possibility we could get rejected from 135. Above 135 will likely run to 138 and then above 138, we're breaking out of the bear market resistance trend line and we could start to run to 140 to 146. Critical downside support remains 130 because if we break 130, we're likely going to 122 with support on the way there at 125 to 126. On the financials, we were up 0.75% today with a very bullish daily candle and we do have the full bull trend. So the financials are bullish as long as we can hold above this breakout at 35.9. The industrials were down 0.12% today with the price action still above all of the moving averages and we still do have a bull trend. The healthcare sector was up 0.44% today, bouncing off the critical support at 134 and closing just below the resistance at the negatively sloping 20 daily moving average. The energy sector was up 0.14% today with the price action back over to all the moving averages as we are developing a bull trend with the next upside resistance up here right around 92. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, we are at very critical bear market resistance and the bulls have a very solid weekly chart with the pivot from 380. So there is going to be a very strong battle next week between the bears and the bulls to see if we can break through the bear market resistance trend line or if the bears can successfully defend that resistance. I still think the highest probability chance is a little bit of a cool down before we go any higher, but I am going to give benefit of the doubt to the bulls over the longer term because I think if they can break through this resistance with the VIX being this low and seeing risk on sentiment and other things like Bitcoin, there is a very good chance we could see a short term bull rally in this year. So we'll instantly know because we're going to let price action do all of the talking and we know the critical support and the critical resistance. Also, don't forget I have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm-driven trade alert service that only trades the ETFs TQQ and SQQ and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. You can learn more about Bank Trade Alerts or learn how to subscribe by clicking on the link in the description of this video. If you're looking to become a better price action trader, come join us over at the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community where you get access to all of my intraday updates and analysis. You can find out how to join the Stocks Channel Discord by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.